Welcome to the Subconscious Mind Mastery Podcast. It's Thomas Miller, and I have a special guest today that really this is way overdue, but I'm going to introduce you to somebody who is going to talk to us about how he's applying his spiritual practice with his technological practice. And this is my good friend, Chet Bowen. Chet and I met in 2019 at a Fred Dodson seminar in Dallas. And we've just become brothers of a different mother since then. And all of the videos, if you're listening to this or watching this on YouTube, all of that and TikTok is Chet. And he's here with us today. And and before we go to Chet, I wanted to set up a little bit of how this came about of where we are and why we're talking about this today. And it went back to when I started doing astrology readings and Chet came for one and I was looking at his chart and after about a 30 year career in technology, he was um, computer programming. I looked at his chart and he said, tell me what I can do for a career besides technology. (laughs) And I looked at his chart and I saw nothing but technology. <laughs> Isn't that right, Chet? <laughs> yes. <laughs> he said, oh, no, 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 Thomas, I'm not doing technology anymore. What else is there? I said, oh, it just this chart just says technology. No, I'm not doing technology. <laughs> Adamant, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, then came the whole crypto wave. And this guy who was still doing his other job, it was kind of phasing out, and he knew it. I mean, he knew it was in a wind-down kind of situation. But all of a sudden, this guy's garage is a crypto mining factory (laughs) with servers and doing all kinds of stuff. And I was like, well, (laughs) he found another angle on technology. And you actually did that from not resisting what the chart was saying, right? Yes, I actually you got me thinking in a different direction. I was so narrowly focused on the type of technology I was working on and staying in the corporate field that when you kept on pushing that, it's like, okay, what else is out there? What other things can I do using my technology skills that is outside the box? So that's what helped me with that. Well, and this is a welcome to the podcast, too, by the way. This is way oh, thank overdue. You. <laughs> way overdue. Then you parlayed that into obviously accumulating crypto, understanding crypto, and that turned into a YouTube channel, which you're not doing anymore, but it was something where you were teaching people how to basically avoid getting screwed by all of the stuff that then became the FTXs and all of that. Yes. You were helping people flag that. Yes. We, we were, it was more of a how to, of how to get started, how to handle your crypto, how to keep it safe, um, things not to do. And a lot of that was you keep custody of your crypto. And we saw from FTX and all these other scandals is people lost their custody They gave someone, they trusted someone else with their crypto and then that company went bankrupt and they lost their crypto. Yeah. So that was a lot of what I was doing was teaching people how not to do the things that everybody did back then. Well, it really was a brilliant cross application of what your chart was saying. The energy was supporting you. And then, like you said, not going back down the old road, you were like, okay, I'm done with that. But you found a whole new road. And one of the brilliant things about technology is you've got plenty of avenues and roads to go down. You'd picked a good one at the time. And and, and your reading helped me to realize there was more than what I was just seeing. I was very narrowly focused. I had blinders on that that's all I could do. And you helped me to, to break out of that. Well, fast forward a couple of more years in technology, which is like decades in about anything else. <laughs> we, yes. And we have AI. Yes. You have now taken on looking at AI from a different perspective. And this is where this gets so interesting. So a couple of months ago, Chet asked if he could use my voice for some AI stuff. And I was sure. So he took some audios and, and uh, trained the AI. And now you have yet again, kind of reinvented and gone down a direction where technology is going and you're a little bit ahead of the curve as far as an application of this. Tell people what you're doing now. Well, what I decided to do is, and this goes back to, let's back up a little bit. 
you had your family incident uh, several months back mm -hmm. and I was going through a similar, I guess, spiritual journey where my background is Christian and I wanted to get back to the Bible. And I just had this drawing back to the word of God, back to the Bible. And I think it was just some energy going on in the space because you were going through your event and it was at the exact same time I had this. So I was looking at AI and I wanted to create a channel where we could just put out daily scripture and not get into all the denominations, all the theology, just put out purely the word of God, just put out scripture. At the same time, I'm a technology guy. I'm not a radio guy. I'm not a broadcast guy. I don't have that radio voice the way you do. So I was playing around with different AI voices, but they sounded AI voices. And many of them I've heard on other channels. And I didn't want to be just another channel that had an AI voice. And I came across one company that actually allowed me to clone a voice. And that's when I'm like, ah, Thomas has a great voice. Let me grab his audios. Fed him through the AI, trained AI. And now I spit out the scripture verses with your voice, yet you're not doing anything. It's all me behind the scenes. And what's the channel? So that led to the creation of a YouTube channel that four times a day, I throw out a short Bible verse with you, quote, reading it. And then also daily, we have a short Bible verse and a prayer that we have for anybody that just wants to start their morning off with a, a short devotion and prayer. And what's the channel? What's the name of the channel? How would people find it? Go to YouTube and type in ampersand or at word of the Lord 316. All right. And just so people can get a flavor of what we're talking about here, let me play one of these videos so you can hear it. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he hath set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. Ecclesiastes 3, 11. Here's another one. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. For who is God, save the Lord? And who is a rock, save our God? God is my strength and power and he maketh my way perfect. 2 Samuel 22, 31-33. Tell you what, that replication is pretty scary, Chet. <laughs> <laughs> and it's only getting better. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's yeah. some inflection stuff that I hear in there and some pausing and things that will get worked out, but the, that's incredible. Yes, and that's the, the, the power, and I think what you help click that part of my brain is... I'm a, as a technology guy, I have the computer do stuff for me. So when I wanted to get into this and I had this idea to do this, I'm realizing I'm not a radio guy. I'm not a voice guy. That's not what I do, but I can have the computer do it for me. And that's what I've been doing for 40 some years. Mm -hmm. So taking your voice, what your talent and what God has given you and matching up with what God has given me, we've created this channel. Well, I'll tell you what, I am thrilled with it. I'm so glad to have this kind of material out there. And we're going to talk about that in a minute, about this move back to this pure essence of spirituality. And this is one reflection of it. Here's another thought, though. You could have trained Morgan Freeman. There's mm -hmm. plenty of his voice out there. Uh, Jane Seymour. I mean, you know, you could have... There are a lot of people that you could have picked their voices without their permission. You ask me, and I'm like, sure, yeah, absolutely. But that seems to be one of these lines that all of us looking at this development of AI are concerned about in the future, is could somebody just grab my voice without my permission? If I've got a YouTube channel or a podcast, or if my voice is just out there, or somebody could get me on the phone and record that conversation. There's a lot of mischief that could happen with this. What are your thoughts on that? Because, and the reason I'm asking is because you did such a good job of shoring that and flagging that with the crypto. Are you seeing that as a challenge here with AI? Absolutely. And actually there was a news article I read probably about a week or two ago where a teacher at a school was about to get fired 
because his principal was looking into some illegal activity that the teacher was doing. And the teacher took his voice, the principal's voice, cloned it and had the principal saying a bunch of racist things and had this recording as if it was in a meeting or a conference that the principal was at and then released it out on Facebook. Well, the, I believe it was the FBI got involved and they were able to analyze the audio and determine that it was AI. Well, my concern is we're going to get to a point that you're not going to be able to tell that. Now, I'm sure a lot of the commercial companies like what I'm using put some type of digital signature in their cloning to say, hey, this is where it came from, what account that it came from, so they can trace it back to me. However, put on my tinfoil hat, I'm sure the three-letter agencies have technology that that does not happen because any of these signatures have to be, you know, it's voluntarily put in there by the AI companies. So eventually I think we're going to get to where you're going to hear a voice or a clip of somebody saying something that was never said. And the same thing on the video side that you're, you're getting to the AI cloning or the AI creation of video. And I was telling you about this one where Epic Games has their Unreal gaming engine. And I saw a video of one of their new gaming engines that they came out with a few months back. I think it's still in beta where they were showing a car fire in an inner city location and it looked 99% real. There was just a few things I was watching as the flames came out of the car that, okay, that's not real. But it was so, so close. And we're getting to the point where I'm going to watch a video of Thomas Miller out there saying things, and that video is created, and the voice is created, but 99% of the people watching that video will think Thomas Miller said and did those things. And that's what's scary. Yeah, that is. That can be used for good or for mischief. Yes. I mean, for good, instead of just doing the voice, I could have a picture of you and have you reading it like you're sitting in your booth and have you reading scripture, which would be a positive thing, especially if you have signed uh, signed up for it and you agree with what I'm doing. At the same time, it's like any new tool. It can be used for good or for bad. Let's play another one here. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. First Chronicles 29.11 I mean, these are, and what kind of response are you getting from these? Overall, very well. Um, a lot of comments of, you know, just the normal, Amen, thank you, Lord. I've gotten several where people are saying, this is the scripture I needed to hear today. And they're just scrolling through their shorts feed. And this is where I draw back to what you were going through, because part of your journey is you had criticism where you have your Oracle deck and you pull from your Oracle deck on Sunday nights and you'll relate a common theme to whatever's in the Oracle deck to what you're going through or what everybody else is going through. And I see the same thing with scripture. And it doesn't matter where, where it comes from. I look at it as spiritual, that there's a spiritual aspect. If I can read or see anything and gain a spiritual insight, or if it comforts me during this time, I'm not going to say, well, one message is bad because it wasn't from a quote, a good source. And this message is good because it did come from a good source. So overall, the, the messaging or the response I'm getting is very, very positive. Yeah, that's just awesome. Here's one from the New Testament. We've been playing Old Testament. Let's do one from the New Testament. This is from Matthew. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Matthew 7 seven and eight. You know, the question here is, will this replace the need for human narration? Will we get to the point where we just type that into a Word document and then literally as we hit the button, it spits that out and we're done and we don't need all of this technology and this equipment? 
I, I think eventually you may see that. And, and you and I have talked about terrestrial radio. That's pretty much happened with terrestrial radio, where back in the day when you first got started, there was a guy in the DJ booth and he had the, the LPs. He actually talked. He actually started the song. He ended the song. He talked again. And now you have people talking, but there's no music. And then the computer interjects the music at the exact time. And then as the music ends, the people start talking again, but that might've been recorded yesterday or last week. So I, I see that we're eventually heading there. And once again, it, there's two sides of the coin. There's the good or the bad. There's the, the bad side that people can steal your voice, having you say things you don't really believe or steal your content and have you do an audiobook that they're making money. Then on the positive side is once you pass and you you leave this world, you can leave that as a legacy. So the, the positive side is your voice can live on forever, that you can do audiobooks on books that aren't going to be written for 20 years. Now, now, now that gets wild. Yes. <laughs> License your voice to somebody to carry it on. Or you, you leave your, your voice to your estate, and that estate can then use your voice just like elvis or any you know michael jackson has his songs you know that yeah. the, the ownership of those songs goes to the estate which then can either be sold or profited from by your your family or your heirs now let's talk about this shift back to scripture that's coming at a strategic time because as i've been i've been moving back as you know in ways, I mean, not full on, but in ways, we've had Joe Rogan now did an interview a couple of months prior to when we're recording, and it was a very uh, seemed. I didn't listen to it, but I read about. I read the summary of it, and it was a. We need these values back in our system. We have come so far; the pendulum has definitely swung too far the other way. And, and we also have Russell Brand, and I know he is very polarizing with his conviction, But and Doreen Virtue, who used to be with Hay House, the angel deck people that most of us have a Doreen Virtue angel deck. Well, now she is speaking the word of the Lord. Matthew McConaughey is another one that comes up to mind. A lot of people have either returned or are advocating some form of Christian belief attachment. What's your thought on that? I, I think there is some type of spiritual awakening that are drawing people back. My concern, and I know listening to your audience on Sunday nights, that there's a lot of people in your audience that have a Christian background, and they, they've been hurt. Something gone on in the church, and obviously you've told your story, the things you've gone through. And I, I just try to distinguish between the Bible and Christianity and modern-day American churches. Because I don't see them as the same anymore. I mean, you can't get away from the news. And it seems that our modern American churches are, have become patent place. And I just want people to focus back. Now, forget the organized religion. Forget what people call Christianity in the churches for walls. Just get back to the spiritual side of it, the Bible. Get back to the Word. Don't get caught up in the dogma or the doctrine but just get back to the word and allow it to speak to you directly. And you move on from there. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings, and not one of them is forgotten before God? But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Luke 12, 6 and 7. These are just great little encouraging verses, aren't they? Yes, you and that's why I picked those, because scriptures like that sort of go along with the theme of the program, is that we can create our own reality, that there is a source outside of ourselves, no matter what we want to call it, that is looking out for us and really wants the best for us. And if, and if God or source or nature or whatever we want to call it, is taking care of all the little birds out there and the squirrels and, you know, possums that run around my yard, the deer, and he's taking care of those. Why would he not take care of us? Why would he ignore us? 
take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Matthew 6, 34. From the Sermon on the Mount. Yes. And it, it, one of the main reasons I did this is because a lot of people I've talked to have been hurt in church. When you talk about their church history, or especially people that says, I used to be Christian, there's always a story in there about them being hurt. If you listen to Thomas's podcast, you you know that journey, you know that hurt. I've been hurt. I see the, the things going on. I've heard the comments of the people on Sunday night talking about their hurt. So that's who, to me, this is really going out to, is those people that have been hurt, please deal with that hurt. At the same time, there's something important about the Scripture, the scripture and the Word of God. And we're not asking anybody to go back to church. We're not asking anybody to go back to that. We're asking them to read the Bible, listen to this, and use this to develop your own unique spiritual journey to where you're going and figure and just use this as a tool, as a guide to help you get to where you need to be in this life. I love that we're not throwing out the good because of the bad. Yes. And that, I think, is this message that we're hearing from Rogan and McConaughey and these people who have, to some degree, I mean, I don't know if it's phony or not, have no idea, don't know them, but, I, you know, you just see what you see and read what you read. But here are people that are starting to feel this inside, and this is exactly what we've been talking about, is there is going to be, but it's going to be different. This is not going to be a fundamental religious revival. This is going to be true spirituality. Yes, and that's the goal or what I was aiming to do with this is to help people raise their vibration to grow spiritually. And if that's within an organization or a church, perfect. That's wherever people are comfortable with. I don't, I'm not trying to get people out of that. I'm looking more at those people that have left that because of a hurt, but at the same time, their heart's still yearning to get back to the, at least the word and go, go to that, listen to that, read your Bible and grow spiritual, and follow your own path. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love, he will joy over thee with singing. Zephaniah three seventeen. Chet, thanks for doing this, and thanks for uh, including me in it too. <laughs> You're, I, I could have done it without you. I, I watched you know, the, the analytics and many of the videos people actually listen to two or three times. And I'm like, they're, they're listening to your voice read the scripture because it's, you know, the video is, is only about 10 or 15% of that. It's, it's the voice, the delivery. I think even though it's an AI clone, people do sense the genuineness behind your voice. Well, you've been listening to these podcasts for quite a while, and you know how we close them out. Yep. Enjoy the journey.